Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the city of St. John. We ask you, God, to give wisdom to the council members and to those who will share reports and opinions during this meeting. And Lord, just as our mothers encourage us to play nice with one another, help all of us in this meeting tonight to treat one another with respect and kindness. We ask for your direction for what is best for our community. Keep our hearts safe during this time as we seek to help the community of St. John move forward in becoming a better, safer place to live and work and worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Thank you. Additions to the agenda. Now I did have an addition of resolution number 765. I have it on, your on the table here. Um, pertaining to, it came through on the city clerk's list, sir, pertaining to um, legislation that is trying to move our election to the fall with the other partisan elections. And we are opposed to that. I don't know if you are, but the city clerks are opposed to that, thinking that it's moving everything to a partisan instead of trying to keep it nonpartisan. They're working on that with the school board too, right? Yes, they are. Yeah. And we are also opposed to it. So if you should choose to pass that down the way here, um, I would get that to our representatives. A copy of the resolution. Opposing. But we'll deal with that under yeah. administration for John. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Okay. What about Jackie? She's already gone. She's, She's taken gone. Pam's place right here. Okay. Um, I need to add a 10-minute executive session after the consent agenda. Non-elected personnel. Ten minutes? Yeah. All in favor, right hand. Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Amy? You want me to stand? Forever? I, I have um, a request for some parking signs in front of my office. <clears throat> Especially on court days, the, the parking around my office gets really congested. The courthouse has one hour right now. So if someone's going to be at the courthouse in an extended period of time, they just park in front of my office, and that kind of creates a mess from whenever I have clients coming in. Um, additionally, there's a handicap parking already in place on my side, and I've been there three years, and we've only used it like twice. Uh, very seldom. I don't know if that's something that, a regulation that has to be there, but if that can be taken out, that's fine also. I, that was here before I even came here. Yeah, there is a you know an additional spot that's been added down by the annex that wasn't there before. So uh, I think it was just a, a, a way to try and have some there for the courthouse. So. Is there a? Can you tell me if if you remember offhand? Is there a? wheelchair accessible close to that or not? Because if I remember right, there's really nothing there except for the driveway. The, 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 and the driveway's off, you know, the right, off yeah. limits now. So no, there's really not. They, they'd still use the corner. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Uh, I guess maybe in front of the annex there, there's... Yeah, so there's one over there, but I didn't, couldn't remember if there was one in front of your building right there. And I couldn't, I don't think there is. Well, so. on the corner. On the corner, yeah. But, but that's not, the handicap's clear at the other end. Or exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it really defeats like, the purpose of it. So. Okay. You state in your letter that it's due to a few county employees. Yeah, that's, that's my major um, parkers are county employees. And I've asked them if they can use the lots that the county spent money on, and they 
kind of disregard me. <laughs> You're not asking me. <laughs> well, it, some of the commissioners actually park there too, so it doesn't get very far. So we need to have one of our commissioners talk to one of their commissioners? <laughs> See if it can get resolved. All, all I'm asking is um, if I can, you know, I don't mind if people park there. It's not my parking. I don't own it. But we had a, an RV park there all day a few months back because it needed to be inspected by Bill Edward. Yeah, you know, that, that kind of gets a little bothersome there. Kevin, okay, well, I think you're probably right. I think we need to just, maybe you take it upon yourself, maybe this is the county commissioner, if we can get it headed off before we have to make any big amount of change. Mm -hmm. But I can see your point. Mm -hmm. Can we take out the handicapped parking then too? Do you couldn't. see a problem with that, Mel? Or? Probably not. Like I said, there is one over there, you know, down by the annex. So we just need to pay that for yeah, we can take the sign out, and I think that curb is kind of faded anyway, and if not, we're going to just paint it gray, which we've done in the past. Do we need a council action to do it? Or can we just direct it to do it? Yeah, it's not a change in policy, so you can just direct it. Okay, so My, is that what council would like then, is to have that handicap stall in the Yeah. I'd really like to have the one hour put up, though, if you think about um, the court dates, too. Um, they're there most of the morning, sometimes afternoon, and it does create quite a problem. I'll talk to the county commissioners, and I've asked them twice and received no response. We will uh, add it to the agenda for the first meeting in March. Okay. And make a decision on the one hour. Okay. And, and then, then and in between time, I'll see if I can meet with them. And I think Kevin is planning on also trying to talk with okay. them. So. Okay. I'll go ahead right. tomorrow. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Pause <clears throat> well, now. We're at Area Humane Society, and we have Jackie Werner yes. in place of Pamela Howell. Did you guys get a chance to look at the letter that Pam sent? So I don't need to read that to you then. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of here to answer any questions you might have. I know she visited with Stafford. Um, the reason that we're doing this is because one of our big backers that we had who was donating about ten grand a year has backed out. So we're fundraising now. Um, Stafford County and the City of Stafford have both donated, the City of Stafford donated 500 I believe, it might have been 750, it was 750. The County donated a thousand. Um, but we've gotten to where we have to segregate those. So people who get an application in, or a um, SNAP voucher and bring it to our clinic, they have to be, I have to know where they come from because each county is now only accepting their residents. Um, Stafford actually ended up paying for about 15 vouchers that came out of St. John last year. So um, they only want to as is Pratt County is only paying for residents in Pratt County. City of Stafford is only paying for the City of Stafford, and then there's another account for the country folk that live in the county. Um, but we've also gone to Maxville, and they're still a, they're still on the fence about it, whether they want to do it or not. Um, I did bring some financials to show you, you know, as far as the amount of people from St. John that were covered on SNAP yesterday or yesterday, last year. Um, it's kind of a long drive over to Pratt, I know. There's a vet in Great Bend that does honor the SNAP vouchers as well. So I think Great Bend's closer for you guys than Pratt, isn't it? It's about, about the same. The same. Is it? Okay. Um, can I answer any questions anybody might have? Was there a specific dollar amount you were looking for? I don't know that fact. I think she had originally requested in the letter 900 from St. John. She had some numbers that she came up with from that amount as far as the number of vouchers and things that were honored last year. And I do have, you guys can keep these financials if you'd like, if you can make sense of it without me being here to show you. Um, it'll show, I know it says,
as Stafford, a lot of these were, and it said in the letter too, a lot of them were St. John people. Yeah. So, um, this program is, is a really good program. I feel like um, we're going to, our, our financials are going to be exhausted by probably the end of the summer at the rate we're going. We have about 4,000 in the account. I handle the financials of the SNAP. Pam and Donna Weigel created SNAP several years ago. Um, and it's just Pam and I now dealing with the paperwork and the financials and the fundraising. And it's associated with the animal shelter as well. We kind of piggyback off of their 501c3. So um, the reason we're trying to get each city to donate is because that money's going to be gone probably by the end of the summer. And we'll have to shut the program down until we can get money raised. And if you guys decided you wanted to donate money to it, it doesn't have to be that much. It could be 500 And we would, I would be able to, if you guys have somebody with a voucher coming from St. John, your money is only going to go for St. John residents. So that'll be differentiated in the paperwork. Okay, I think I have an idea of what it is, but what is SNAP? Spay Neuter Assistance Program. Okay. It's a program for low-income families to get their pets altered. Okay. To get a dog spayed, up, it's right around $30. And so, some if if say they only gave five hundred, <coughs> if you ran out of that and you could come back to us and say St. John people have already used this mm -hmm. amount, yes, then we could do some more. Yes, absolutely. That... You can donate any amount you want, and and I can come to you again when that money's exhausted and show you, hey, this is how quickly we used it, and these are who's using it, and it's a, it's a good program. We see a lot of them. Um, of course, Pam is clear out by Preston, so we don't see a lot of St. John people. We have a few clients from this area, but um, a lot of the St. John ones go to Dorman and Pratt or over to Countryside, I believe it is. So, I have a, a little uh, a form you guys can keep. You don't have to decide tonight if you don't want to. If you need more time to think it over, that's okay, too. Um, I haven't had any from St. John yet come in this year. so. Um, do we have a fund for anything like that? or We have an animal control fund. Um, it's actually under the police department. That's what we take our rabies clinic out of uh -huh. and pay Jim to do the, the um, rabies vaccinations. It's also our dog tags. Um, and it may be that we need to budget more in that if we consider doing this more, you know, um, you know, we're at the beginning of the budget year, so there is this for a second. On this last page, it shows the dog, it has a breakdown of the dog spays and neuters. This is dog spay, neuter, cat spays, cat neuter. Okay. The different pricing and stuff. Because basically, a dog spay is going to be, it's 105 total. So when the client comes in with a SNAP voucher, they pay 30 out of pocket, and then the rest of that 105 comes out of the SNAP grant. So, what about the cat? The cat neuter is 20 for the copay, and SNAP pays 25. A dog neuter is 70, so they pay 30 on the copay, and SNAP pays 40, and the cat spay is we changed all the copays we actually rounded them up a little bit just to help save some money because we were running out the cat spays are 55 they're 55 so it's 25 and then we pay 30. John do you know um, approximately just a roundhouse figure what we might have in there? Well I'm I mean, we, like I said, it's the beginning of the budget year, so uh, I think the better way to look at it is see what we had at the end of last year okay. mm -hmm. and see kind of if we have some little you know, leeway in there of our normal. Ideally, we were trying to get communities to start their own program and handle their own paperwork. Medicine Lodge chose to do it, but they're bigger than you guys, too, so and they have more, more um people utilizing the program. So they did start their own program, which I was very pleased with because I didn't have to try and differentiate, but then, you know, we've got, we've got, everybody's got their own budget now.
Um, our total budget in there is 2400 and we used 18, or I'm sorry, about 1400 so we had about $1,000 last year left over. We had a really quiet year of last year of animals, though. Mm -hmm. It's okay. oh, fine. Well, then I can make um, finances available to you guys anytime you want. All you have to do is call me and I can email them to you. I can send you monthly updates if you would like on who's utilizing the program, how many you're doing, things like that, your, your balance. Anything that you guys need that's going to help you, I'm willing to do. So. Right. Well, I don't know what the rest of the council thinks, but uh, I'd like to entertain the thought of uh, donating, donating some money to that. I feel comfortable with the 500 and then reevaluate it in yeah. August, maybe. Yeah. That would be fine. You come back to council and yeah. talk with us. That'd be great. So, I'd like to make a motion then to. Uh, Make a $500 donation to the Pratt Area Humane Society SNAP program. Second. Is there any further discussion? Did you say how much? 500 okay. To be paid out of the animal yes. control. Is this a state funded type thing? No. Is that where it started with state nope. level? Nope. We, Pam Howell and Donna Weigel created this program to help the unaltered animals and eventually control part try to control the pet population of you know homeless and unwanted pets so and the original like I said that big donor is not involved with it anymore she was she was the main backer for it so we have uh, all kinds of little fundraisers that we do to get money in there is there any further discussion all in favor of the right hand Opposed? Motion carries for a. Thank you very much. Um, do you guys have? I'm sure you know how to get a hold of Pam. Yeah. Or myself. And she could email me tomorrow and give me the specifics of how the check needs to be written and okay. so forth. And then we'll have it in the next appropriations for you. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you again. All right, consent agenda. Um, approve minutes for regular meeting of 2 4 2014. Approve appropriation ordinance 02 18 2004 in the amount of 28,202.90. Is there any discussion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Okay, we need to recess to executive session for 10 minutes to discuss non-elected personnel to include mayor and council. Motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries for a meeting back to order. Title of head electrician to report to the mayor. To whom that is, we don't know yet. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Now that we've done that, have we violated something? Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to look in the uh, personnel manual. Mm -hmm. I think it does specifically say, you know, who reports to who. Okay, well so, then, can, then we would need to modify the personnel manual and bring that back for council to yeah. approve additional. Yeah. Okay. I do not see Chief Sanders, so I'm assuming that he is not going to be here. Chief Sailor. Uh, I would like to request the uh, purchase of uh, two radios and one antenna for those radios. Uh, when we did uh, our budget stuff, I had asked for uh, an additional thousand dollars to be placed in the budget for purchase of uh, UHF radios. Stafford County operates off of VHF and the surrounding counties operate off of UHF. 
And so the uh, we've run into some issues of being able to communicate and things like that when if we have pursuits or um, we're assisting other agencies. Um, they're going to be purchased from Chief uh, Doug Brown at Stafford, and I had asked him to get me a, either an invoice or um, estimate or something. He hasn't got that to me yet. So because the thousand dollars was approved to put in there, I would like to be able to spend up to about the, the price per radio should be around 330 to 350, um, and then probably uh, I believe the antenna is probably 40 to 50. So it would be under a thousand, but because I don't have an exact dollar amount, I'd like to be approved to spend up to a thousand for two radios and, and an antenna. So is the county got the V? You say VHF? Stafford, Stafford, yeah, we have, Stafford County operates off of VHF. Um, our surrounding counties all operate off of UHF, and so that's the purpose of the UHF radio, so we can communicate with other counties when we're does, doing. Does the county have UHF radios? Yes. Do you know who the vendor would be that you would purchase from? Well, it's, it's you mean the brand? No, or who you would actually pay for the It radio. would be paid to, to Doug. Doug has a, a, a side business that he deals in, in radios. I don't know okay. his his company name because I'm still, like I said, I'm waiting on that. Get it so I can put it yeah. in the minutes? Yeah. Thank you. What, uh, what kind of radios are they going to be? I call ICOM is the brand. I-C-O-M. Does Motorola offer them? Motorola does, but they're about uh, probably six to seven hundred dollars a piece. You're looking for two of them, Adam? One for each patrol car. Right. Okay. Well, I'd like to uh, move to allow Adam to purchase two of the UHF radios to spend, give him the authority to spend up to but not over a thousand. Also an antenna. Also an antenna, yes. Excuse me. Do I have a second? I second. The motion is second to allow the chief of police to purchase two radios and an antenna for an amount up to a thousand dollars, but not to go over. Is there any further discussion? What's going to amount? What's what's the, how much mounting and wires and stuff of that nature has to be run besides what we've got? The uh, one of the antenna, the reason I requested one antenna is when we uh, upfitted the truck, we went ahead and put a UHF antenna in there. That's why we had them all torn apart. So it's just going to consist of uh, putting the two radios in, which is just a, a, a power and ground wire, and then running one antenna in the car. Do you have any idea what that's going to cost? We can we can do that. Okay. What do you do with the old radios? We're, we're not getting rid of any radios. Oh. We're, we're adding these oh. because, like I said, we it's, it's so we can communicate with our surrounding counties. I see. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. We have a report? Yeah. Um, we're still in the process on a part-time officer um, of the four applications I've sent out. I got uh, two back. One came in for an interview, and uh, after the interview did not pass a background check. Um, the other one agreed to an interview and never showed up. So um, in the last week, I've gotten another application from a citizen here in town. Um, that is, he's, he's not certified or anything like that, um, but does have um, history in the Navy being a uh, some kind of security or something in the Navy, um, and then he currently works um, full time at the uh, JUCO in Barton County. So I'll probably end up uh, we advertised for a couple weeks and and got a lot of interest, just didn't get it, a lot back. And like I said, the one we did get back that looked good on paper turned out to to not work out. So. We're still, still looking, probably going to advertise another week or two and move forward as much as we can. Any questions on that? Okay. And then uh, last week we had a uh, 
uh, drug dog from Pawnee County came and uh, went through the school. That went great. I'm happy to report that we didn't have any drug items or anything like that found. So, it went good. Was that hard to get per approved to do that? Approved. To go through the school? With the school? Yes. No. No, they were 100%. That's awesome. it, it was It was almost uh, kind of like, what have you been waiting for kind of thing. I think most of the students were just afraid they were going to find your Twinkie stash or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and and they, the, the Pawnee County did great if they said at any time that we need them, if they don't charge, that's just part of the service they provide. So. That's awesome. That's all. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so resolution 765. I know you didn't have any packets, so if you want to take a couple of minutes to look over it. Second. I'm sorry for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for a, to approve resolution number 765. The only other thing I have to report is that they did complete the audit Friday afternoon. And, um, I think they'll be here the second meeting of March with their audit report. I believe Danielle will be coming this time. She kind of took more of the lead on it. So. No. Okay, uh, first item that is back over here. Uh, I had that laid out for you. What happened uh, with removing some snow and uh, just here on the 4th Street, 4th Street, and just Came up to the stop sign here, and uh, we've been working fine, no odor or anything, and got to the stop sign here, and the brake pedal was very soft. After it went down, and Maco didn't want to stop, pulled over to the shop, and the oil had gotten really hot in there. That's <coughs> a wet brake. Uh, talked to uh, Murphy Tractor in regard to this, and this cover here shows kind of what what it's going to take to fix it. I did, didn't include in that is that this this particular rear end on this machine has had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things go that can go awry with this that and that's what they're referencing to the upgrades that can be done while rather than just fixing that particular particular item of the brake part that it makes good sense while they've got it take it all out and put a remanufactured uh, rear end in it rather than going through and that's what that uh, in fact it costs more to do re rebuild that one right there uh, as, as is rather than getting one it was nine thousand six hundred sixty one ninety eight to remove and reassemble and, and make the upgrades as required so uh, it's just a, a apparently a defect that shows up in you know, we, we got hit with the brake part and rather than uh, sliding gear and your axle not coming loose or thrust washers causing excessive you know there's numerous things so 
So to go through there and do what they recommend uh, on that, uh, allowing for worst case scenario, uh, we're looking at $11,570. I feel like if we allow 12000 for it, that would probably catch it. You know, if they, would, they came up with something else. That got me, so. What year of back home is that? It's a nine, I think we got a 97. It's got a little over 4000 hours on it. It's a John Deere. Yeah, 310 SE. some other things that have gone wrong with that. And we're saying axle and what all comes with that, you know, it would It'd be a pinion drive and a ring and pinion. And I'm assuming that's what they're yeah, talking about. It'd be a whole new remanufactured. Can't get new. I mean, it's too old a machine, and who knows what that would cost. But this this remanufactured uh, axle would have all the upgrades that they've had issues with. Is it from John Deere? I don't. You know, I I can't answer that. I really can't answer that. Is remanufactured by John Deere? Is that your question, or is mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Did a John Deere reman? Or? I I couldn't answer that. Uh, I'm I'm assuming it is because he. You know, he may, they, John Deere may have someone else remanufacture it for him. You know, I, I don't know that. It's like Napa. We don't know. You know that's one of those things they buy, buy them and they have someone else doing the work. Where would the money be coming from? Uh, John and I visited with this and it would be the water uh, uh, capital outlay. And if, if something else came up, or we've got, you know, the line on budget amount is 15000 we're down about fourteen now. If something else would come up during the year that we would need need this money for, I mean, she talked like we could do some. If it wasn't something that we could use the surplus fund or an equipment reserve fund, we could reallocate this expense and be able to free that budget up a little bit. Okay. It's a pretty big hit at the beginning of the year, but we'll still just have to see um, what, what comes about. Some thousand hours didn't bring many hours on the machine. Mm -hmm. No. No, they won't. Reman actually carries one year 1500 hour warranty installed by John Deere D. Didn't say when it's John Deere Reman. Three man select axle, so it's not going. Yeah. That is the only thing that John Deere has a drawback is they're they're not inboard brakes. I mean, they're not, or are they? They're, they're inboard wet. Brake. wet. They're wet, wet brake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The newer one, sort of case, has outdoor planetary and better system. Mm -hmm. The case is better back on the John Deere for Yeah. 
I agree with that now. Yeah. But this is something that it's got to be fixed because it wouldn't be worth nothing trading what it is. Mm -hmm. So then I'm looking for a motion to approve the expenditure of $12,000 to repair the, replace the axle with the remanufactured version on the backhoe and with the money to come from the water capital outlay fund. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? What do you think, Gary? Is that, you think that's yeah. about all we can do? Oh, yeah. I don't think. Gary? Mark? I don't think you could go anywhere else. I mean, I mean I've initially I called him up there and I said, "What would it cost to to tear into it to see even you know if it's your, we were just looking at a brake job? Just that is twelve hundred dollars right there, just to, just to look at it, and then that's not recoverable. You know, if we go ahead and go, I mean, that's just if they go ahead and because they got to put it back together and all, you know, so." That's just to, just to examine it to, to go so I thought, well, we might look out, but then when I got this bolts and all this other stuff, it would be kind of foolish. We fix the brakes and then something else goes haywire on that thing and we're right back, you know, we've got an issue again. And it's going to be down at Great Bend? Yes. The 97 model? Yeah, we took the number in 97 on it. I'd say well more than half of those hours are snow removal. Yeah, I'm sure. That's the hardest thing you can do in the back of it, for a piece mm -hmm. of equipment. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the table. Is there any additional discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Item I had was uh, request uh, an executive session of non elected personnel for uh, 10 minutes to include uh, myself, council, mayor, and would exclude Sherry. I have a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 3 0. Order. Yeah, yes. Uh, the only thing I had, well, a couple of things. Um, our, we had Zach Minnis work for us for several years as summer help, and he's not going to be coming back. So we're going to have an opening for part time summer help. If I get permission to go ahead and, and run an ad for that, if that's okay. And uh, probably ought to get started on uh, advertising for uh, mowing. Yeah, we've got that taken care okay. of, and the next meeting uh, will be the, the sewer pond sheep. Okay, but we're gonna. If it's okay with you guys, we'll go ahead and add for the run ad for the part-time summer help and take getting bids on mowing the lots. So we do. So that's the one. All I what about swimming pool stuff? That's we've got already, already got, got, got that. An ad yeah. 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 We've already got your initials in there. <laughs> <laughs> I already have another job. Sorry. Okay. That's all I have. New business, curbside recycling. I wanted to bring this back to council, but as I'm looking back at Stafford County Trash's proposal, I think we've already approved this with the curbside included. Help me out here, John, because we approved this 725. The 1725? Yeah, 1725. Which is option two, correct? Option three was to do it with I've individuals. had some interest expressed in having the city look at doing curbside recycling. Um, 
What I'd like to do is talk to Terry a little bit more because I found a grant that would provide open space containers, which is the six cubic yards, no sort recycle bins that he's talking about here. Coca-Cola does them for municipalities and schools, and so it's a fairly easy form to fill out. I'm thinking that might be something that he wants to pursue with our backing to save the cost of those bins, which is $2,400 plus freight. And then we could look at possibly taking that money and using it to buy 20 gallon containers with the idea of rolling them out to the customers at no cost. If they wanted to recycle. If they wanted to recycle. When, I, I, when, I, when I, I talked to Terry mm -hmm. uh, a little bit about, you know, just because I wanted to know for myself, um, he said that would be a whole nother route. Mm -hmm. So probably to make it beneficial, we'd have to have a good amount of people that wanted to do that, you know, to make it cost effective, I guess. Okay. Talk to them about that. Yeah. But it's something I'd like everybody to think about a little bit and, um, you know, possibly talk to people when you're out and about and get some feedback from the community, see what their thoughts are, and then we can bring it back and discuss it further at the first meeting in March if council's interested in doing that. I would think that. Anybody that's going to recycle is already doing it. I mean, except for except for the school, they probably need some kind of a better we situation. We do, and I can tell you that I don't recycle currently. But if I had a container that I could just pitch stuff into and roll it out to the curb, I would recycle. I'm with her. I think there's. Uh, I've talked with a few people, and they're interested in in doing that. And they were wondering if we were going to do that. So I think this this might uh, push some few people to start doing it. I know I would. So. The plus side of it is, is if we have people that will do it, it will keep our trash expense down. Mm -hmm. from because it takes that, that takes $31 a ton for every ton we divert out of the landfill. Mm -hmm. That's a savings to the trash company. So that should help keep rates down. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, if you guys, like I said, give it some thought. You know, if you absolutely hate the idea and you don't want to do it, okay. But, you know, I think it would be great if we could talk to some of the community members and see how they feel as well. And then take it from there. So, John, I think we'll put it on the agenda for old business for next time. Okay. All right, and then the last item is under old business is the cost of living increase. We've put this off trying to get a full council here, but I think in the interest of time, we need to go ahead and get this taken care of this evening. Um, does anyone have ideas, thoughts, as far as what we want to do? My thoughts are that uh, the uh, cost of living raise could be pushed off on the increase of health care, which it is a huge <coughs> asset that uh, not very many businesses get, and we are absorbing that currently. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with, uh, with Kevin with pushing the, the, the ride on the, on the health care. That's a that is a very, very big perk that most people don't get. And until that's dealt with or changed, I'm, I'd say that's a cost of living itself. So. I agree. That's a big, large that's amount. It's a very big amount, that's for sure. Okay, so what I'm hearing council saying is that they don't feel the cost of living increase is needed on top of the increase in insurance that we're paying for this year. Yes. Do I need do we need to do a motion to that? Because we're not changing anything. Okay. Right. Uh, if there's
there's no further business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yes, All in favor? Motion carries. 4-0 meeting is adjourned.